Anyway folks, I decided to attack the saddle before I put the turret back on since I have to be able to run it off and get it out of, off the bed with taking the turret off. Uh, good way to check the ways too. Definitely a lot of wear on this one. The problem with foundry machines is they just get covered in sand dust. That's what most of this black is. And uh, it turns into lapping compound when it mixes with the oil and, well, it does short work of the ways. The old South Bend 9 inch that I've got was a foundry machine and that's why it's so badly scored up. Well, this one here will be just as good. I'll be able to do bigger work on it, even though it's not 100% accurate. And still snug the saddle gib right up and tighten everything up and she'll turn pretty, pretty reasonable. I mean, that was just straight off the bat. No modifications or adjustments at all and it's not half bad. I'm just going to start stoning this. I found a toolmaker's stone in the old uh, toolbox. I'll try and get some of that corrosion and pitting out. Particularly up here. This just looks terrible. Get all the dirt out. Next step is to take the saddle apart. I'm just going to use this as a reference video in case I lose track of what goes where. It's got big retaining nuts and small retaining nuts and that little thing on there tapered pins. Shouldn't be too hard to get the front of the saddle off. I want to find out why this power feed's jumping out whenever I put this under load. Well, that was interesting. I thought the saddle was sealed but it seems there's a ton of brass in there. I've only opened it up half an inch. It's like gold. Pretty easy to see why she was jumping out of gear. These brass shavings were probably jamming up the works and just overloading it. Well, I must say there's no shortage of brass in here. It just heaps. Hold down things for it. Got a loose bolt here which is floating around. Ah, oh, what a mess. And that's why it's been getting in, I think broken. Everything else seems alright. Tear it down and clean it up. Well that was good. I think I just added a couple of stubbies to my beer fund here. It's got to be about eight kilos or so. Doesn't look like much but it's enough. I'll buy a six pack. Okay well given the bed a light stoning. Uncovered a lot of horrors too. It's a lot rougher than I thought but it'll be alright by the time I'm done. A big hammer blow there. A lot of rust pitting because this machine sat outside for a period of time. Uh, and I found a serial number. That's it there. From what I can tell, 67 might be a plant number. 2041938 would probably be 20th of the 4th 1938 manufacture date. And that's probably its lot number or actual production number, number three, 3,241. That's all I can figure at the moment, but 1938 definitely must be the date. It sort of matches the style of the machine anyway. It's definitely pre-World War II. Very nice machine. Clean the ways up, I'm just using this fine cutting stone. This is supposed to be an engineer's stone, but someone's used it for sharpening knives and things and left a big uh, recess in the center of it, but it is, is actually a polishing stone. I'm going lengthways with the bed. Not too much pressure. Just like cleaning up the back of an injection mold or something before you set it up on the machine. You take off any little burrs and things, any dirt. It's not going to get into the pits and clean all that out. That's sort of there to stay. But she should clean up pretty good. I'm using kerosene as a lubricant too, not oil or anything, just light kero. You can feel the high spots like that one there, so you can feel that pretty good starting to come off. And the outer edges, there's some slight burrs. I don't recommend doing this to a good machine. But considering the state of this machine, I'm going to do it. Just to take any burrs and crap off. Okay, well that certainly looks a lot better now. 
I used a uh, water-based degreaser for this one actually. Just the cheap stuff. I broke a lot of the thick stuff down with kerosene first and then put a strong brush and a rag and away she went. The paintwork leaves a lot to be desired. Might end up repainting it actually. Hell of a job though. coming back together again. I've got the saddle fairly all cleaned up. i to relocate this though, she sprung out on me. I used the pressure cleaner for this lot, so I'm going to pull all this bottom stuff out, but the bed and everything's done. The feed screw for the um, cross slide's fine. That all cleaned up. Brass nut, with bronze. That's the main saddle gib, which bolts in under here. Uh, yeah, just lots of parts to clean and put back together again. Okay, we're gradually coming back together again. That spring was an absolute nightmare to get back on. At the factory they must have a compressor or something which just pinches it, pushes it in, and then they stick the rod through it and release it. Uh, let's just say it took a lot more brute force to get that in and tensioned. Well, it's not even tensioned yet. I've got to wind this in and push it up another inch or so really tight. Everything else is there and working. Power feed shaft. Now I'm just going to put this back together again. Got two little shaft keys and a brass bush because this is the um, cross slide forward reverse power feed. So all that's got to go back in. Well, that's that. It's all back together again and nice and clean. Cross slide been neutral at the moment but that's the forward and reverse there. Little dog clutch in between. That's power feed shaft and drive gear. And that's normal hand wheel shaft. Oh no, that is actually. Everything's a little bit loose, but that's alright. That's just the power feed there.